go get him again. Welcome back to the Rob Zoe channel. I'm your host, Mark, and welcome to Sampling Samples today. It is your subscriber's choice. You voted for this one. It is from the brand of Dolce Gabbana, and it is from their Light Blue series. This one called Light Blue Intense. I have the little decant right here. Now this is probably the most popular release of the brand. Um, I own the original, as you can see right here. And uh, this is the Eau de Toilette, and this was from launch. My bottle is so old, the cap is different from all the other caps out there. And people think that this one, they've always said it's fake. And uh, no, I bought it like right at launch. I was kind of fragrance crazy back in, back in the early 2000s. So I was buying all the designer fragrances. Um, so this one right here, and has a really good dent into it. And I, I wore it quite a bit in my early years, but uh, with a guy with 3000 fragrance bottles, give or take in his collection, and I'm starting to sample this light blue, you can tell I didn't really like this, the, this line. I, I stopped with this. And I, I think the first couple flankers were like summer editions, like really limited releases. And uh, I think this was the first true blue flanker that actually stuck around for a bit. Um, so there was like Volcano something, something rather. And they weren't really fragrances. And, and again, I didn't really check them out. But um, the stigma on this line and its flankers is that not much has moved from the original Eau de Toilette. And that is going to be kind of a theme on this fragrance review on Intense. Now, Intense... Uh, now this one, uh, the Eau de Toilette, um, did get me compliments. It's actually, in my early years of YouTube, you can tell, I think it is in my top 10 most complimented. Um, but as you can tell, compliments is not everything in the game, at least for me. Uh, we're all in this for different reasons. Um, you know, it's always nice to get a compliment, but at the same time, you kind of have to like what you're wearing. I'm not gonna wear a dress if everybody's giving me a compliment. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to do it. Um, so it, it had a very short time span with me. That's pretty much what I'm saying here is this fragrance kind of, I grew up from it, I uh, will say. Now I'm not saying it's a bad scent per se. <laughs> I could be the critic that I am because I am a fragrance reviewer, not an influencer. Um, is it a bad scent in the sea of fragrances in the designer game? Yeah, you, you definitely can do better. Um, uh, which is kind of getting harder and harder to find, uh, but you can definitely do worse. Um, so anyway, I started sampling lately uh, the lineup just to see, you know, what's good, what's not good. You know, I got a, a sampling samples on light blue put on sun and this one's in here. And I think I have a sample of forever. I got a few samples and I got a few bottles also coming in the back end of this. I blind bought a bunch of little bottles for this. So this guy's not going to be alone. It doesn't mean that I like the line. It just means I'm a fragrance reviewer. This happens. Um, so this one right here, this one was so like probably the most popular one of the line and within our community. This was hyped by none other than Jeremy Fragrance. And whoever's the top dog in the YouTube fragrance community, the hype trains kind of just have their own wheels. Like I used to be that guy. And uh, whatever I really liked, everybody else kind of piggybacked on me. It didn't matter if I was completely wrong or, you know, just everybody just piggybacks on the top dog. And he really just hyped what was popular or new at the time. It was pretty easy formula. Uh, so he was hyping pretty much things that are, were already selling well in the fragrance game, personally. Uh, so, but let's see. Let's see what this one is all about. Um, is it really that much better than the Eau de Toilette and the other flankers and why this one is so renowned in our fragrance community on YouTube? And uh, obviously I haven't smelt the whole line. I'm just starting out, but we'll see what this one has all to offer. So let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this one. Release date was back in 2017. So my math is correct. I think this was a 2007 release, so like 10 10 or 10 plus years after this launch. The other flankers before this, I really think, and I, again, I'm not going through the lineage and I didn't do the research. It's just sampling samples, so I don't really care. 
but I remember like three, three flankers of this thing that were just limited edition summer editions that were only out uh, for several months. And then kind of, there wasn't a lot of them. Nose behind this is Mr. Morillis, uh, Mr. Aquadijo, Mr. I know how to do aquatics. And this is the aquatic genre. Um, so he's, he's good at that formula. Now, the big notes to my nose on this one, uh, grapefruit up top, which this thing is known for through the lineage is the grapefruit. Uh, second in command is this aquatic note, which again, it's known for. So um, again, it's not straying away too much from the original and juniper. Um, so there is going to be a little bit of a difference. I believe this one has rosemary, if my Rolodex is correct. Um, again, it's not a fragrance that I really get into too much. It's been a while since I reviewed that bad boy. Um, but uh, yeah, so juniper is in this particular release. So let's get to sniffing. So this one is my scent of the day today, but I want to uh, actually, you know, uh, empty out that one. I also have my test strip from what I've been testing from this one. So let's uh, remind myself of the introduction and just basically empty this thing. Oh, this is a really good atomizer. And it looks like we still got a couple good sprays of this stuff. Okay, she's done, she's finished. And as always, time to launch it. Not bad, pretty good launch. So <laughs> light blue, put them, intense. Right away. This is, there's no, there's no if, in or buts to this thing. It smells like a light blue put on release. Um, yeah, you cannot mistake in this and go, oh, that's a flanker of light blue. I wouldn't know that. No, you, you would know this, especially if you smelt a few of these. Yeah, it has that salty aquatic tinge that is fairly synthetic. Um, it's not gonna blow your mind in regards to aquatics. I'll be honest, it's pretty standard. Um, is that a good thing? Maybe, it's so popular that standard, I guess. Aqua Dijo, same thing, standard aquatic. Um, there's better in the game, there's definitely better, that just kinda gives you imagery. Like Bulgari's Aqua put, um, you know, that that teardrop bottle. I don't know where my Bulgari's are, down here. The original put up, not the marine. That one is synthetic mess. I'm talking about the original put -um. That is almost green algae, like deep diving uh, aquatic. Very interesting. And it's not for everybody, but oh, that is a good uh, aquatic designer release. Now this one, yeah, it, it, it's just there. It's, it's a synthetic, just, yeah, normal, normal. It has this heavy grapefruit in Mandarin to tr introduce us with the ozonic fresh backing. Usually these light blues really push the grapefruit up top. But in this one, I feel like they're kind of together. I, I feel both citruses in here. I still feel the grapefruit and I feel like the grapefruit is, is more central in this um, as, as the note is. Like if you had to pick one, I would say grapefruit is more dominant, but it's like a 60-40 mix here. The Mandarin holds its own, which is quite unique. Both notes are very clean. Um, they're well composed by Morias. Um, not the best, but very vivid. So very good. You know, the grapefruit, I've smelled better. Uh, same with the, um, yeah. So these citruses are good. Um, they're transparent. They're short-lived in this, but they do play their part in the introduction to kind of give you that invigorating kind of hit. The citruses briefly take your nose on the journey and are central, but slowly that salty aquatic ozonic thing comes into play. It actually, you know, within minutes, this thing starts reminding me a little bit of Aqua Dijo. It really does. And of course that's the same nose. So it kind of reminds me of that. And comparing this opening to my original Eau de Toilette, and just keep in mind, I have the launch bottle a lot of people say that this thing was reformulated when it was rebottled. Um, this one, the new intense, or the new, uh, the intense version smells a little cleaner, a little less, uh, there's a, lot, a little less going on. I feel like the Eau de Toilette had more going on than, than this intense version. It almost feels stripped down a bit. 
and kind of he wanted to take the main parts of like Blue Eau de Toilette and kind of emphasize those more with less fluff. And it feels a little cleaner. It feels a little better in regard to the scratchiness. But again, same theme. It's aquatic, it's citrusy, it's aromatic up top. And it is your typical summer opening. Speaking of the aromatic pieces, juniper, juniper comes into play here. Um, a little more in the back end of this opening. And it has a good portion of this late opening into the mid of the release. Um, giving it familiar green piney quality. It gives the scent some balance, some complexity up top. As really there's not much going on in this release. Like for an intense version, I guess I get it. Like it's throwing intensity on, you know, th three main portions, right? The aromatics, which are different. The citruses, which are fairly the same. And then the aquatic, salty, ozonic thing, which is the same. So it, it really kind of gets rid of the noise here for an intense version, less busy, and more about the central theme of the Eau de Toilette, if that kind of makes sense. So there's less complexity here. Once you start hitting uh, the deeper dry down of this release, the citruses burn off, and you are left with the original aquatic salty tinge with the uh, mild juniper, um, kind of piney thing. You get a little amber wood here, which is a generic woody sweet thing with white musks. So there's not much going on. And the amber wood uh, portion of this is very minimal, very light, um, which to a lot of people is a good thing. Uh, but you will, you will feel it a little bit here. It's mostly a white musky aquatic ozonic thing in the back end. Now portions of this aquatic ozotic tinge, uh, I brought out my bottle of Polo Blue Eau de Toilette, which is a half decent $50 fragrance, like right there. Um, the aquatic piece at times in the dry down reminded me of this thing, um, Polo Blue Eau de Toilette from Ralph Lauren, uh, the cucumber watery ozonic uh, appeal of this one. Uh, feels a little bit like that. And not a bad page to, uh, actually this one's quite decent for the below 50 crowd. Like, you know, like your starter fragrance, newbies in the fragrance game. Um, this would be something, you know, just like this light blue, I feel like this is where this thing is going into. I'm going against these. Um, so overall, light blue intense. Um, yeah. So overall light blue intense and composition isn't that big of a change from the original Eau de Toilette, honestly. Um, and from testing these more lately, it seems flankers from this line are very minimal in change. Um, well, I'll keep checking them out. Um, I have several that I have to spell, um, but I'm kind of early into it. I believe the light blue sun was a little different, actually much more different to the Eau de Toilette than the, this intense version. Um, so I, I welcome that. But this release, this intense version, is not that much better than the original. Um, the opening, if I have to say, is mildly better than the original, but that's only based on taste personally. Uh, the dry down is equally as bad. They're both bad. Um, <laughs> the, on the amount of hype this got versus the Eau de Toilette, um, versus the other flankers. It's just people following the top dog on YouTube's opinion and making it more than what it really was. Um, which is another flanker from the line that does small changes to the original formula, which already garnered compliments. Like, and that's the thing, right? Um, fragrance reviewers that don't even test or really dissect fragrances and use terms like sexy compliment factor. Uh, you know, things like that, that, that has no, has no weight. You know, I can tell you that until I'm blue in the face that this is the biggest compliment getter that I have. Number one. Why? What does that have to do with you? Um, you know, it's sexy. It smells, what does that even mean? It smells sexy. Um, sure. They all smell good. <laughs> That's what they're made for. Um, so anyway, at the end of the day, and again, this one gar garnered me compliments and I'm sure this one, this intense version would too.
potato, potato. Uh, let's get into Seasons Day Night Versatilene Performance. Um, seasons, this is based on spring and summer. Um, yeah, it'll work during those seasons. Uh, day or night, this is a daily workhorse. Um, again, when I'm thinking about this light blue lineup, and especially the intense version in this one, I feel like Honestly, um, yeah, they're built for summer, but at the end of the day, like the sun version was more summer driven to me than these. Um, these almost go into that generic in the box kind of boring signature scent. Um, I can wear it with a suit, dress it up. Um, I can dress it down casually. Um, I can wear it during the day, like day or night. So this is day, day, all day. Uh, but it's one of those Swiss army knives, aquatics, right? Um, just like this, right? This is not, you know, these are the type of fragrance, even ADG from Armani, right? The other Marius, uh blue. It, it, it just goes into that, <laughs> that, that white button down shirt, black suit kind of guy. No tie, no tie. Um, <laughs> it, it's good for everything, but it's not really that good. That's where this goes. Versatility, high, sky high. It's signature scent worthy. Um, yeah, it's one of those. Performance. Uh, the performance on this one as an intense version, um, lacking. And these aquatics, they're lacking. So um, this intense version is following the trend of longevity. It was four to six hours on my skin. Again, take my, my thoughts with a grain of salt. Again, it's just a small decant. So I think I got like three or four wearings out of that little decant, which is actually pretty good. But longevity is four to six hours. Um, it was on fumes at hour five and six during my wearings with average projection. So um, just because it says intense on the box doesn't mean it's gonna perform that much better than the eau de toilette. Um, I didn't really see that personally. I feel like they were on par as far as performance. Again, I have, I know launch bottle, Mark, go check out the reformulated. It's a shell of itself. I've heard it all before. Um, so four to six hours with average projection. As far as my final thoughts on this intense version, this fragrance kind of brings me to, this is the McDonald's of the fragrance game. The original Eau de Toilette is the Big Mac top seller that finally got a change, you know, 10 plus years later with an intense, let's call it the Grand Big Mac, right? Um, same recipe. Almost uncanny, the recipe is the same, perhaps a little more vivid on some ideas, kind of stripped away some other ideas, but that's about it. Um, nothing game-changing on this intense version versus Eau de Toilette versus Flakers, right? Um, yeah, not that big of a game-changer here. At the end of the day, aquatics isn't my genre. Um, I've said it several times throughout my YouTube journey, is that I'm not an aquatic guy. You know, I could be okay with Keeley's Cell Marin, which is a niche house. Um, that is the best aquatic fragrance that I've smelled throughout my journey. Um, that's all I need. I don't need more than one aquatics. I'm not that kind of guy. Like I don't like them as much as others do, but this particular fragrance, light blue, uh, put um, intense version is right there with the Aqua Dijos, the Versace's Eau Fraiche, the Bulgari's Aquas of the world. Like the old world aquatic game that hasn't really changed much. It received hype within the community and honestly, it really wasn't warranted. At least to the extent that it did. I smelt a few from this line and I can honestly say this isn't hands down the best of the line. Like hands down, it's like, several steps ahead and it should be getting more videos that it, you know, no. Um, the changes from flanker to flanker are extremely minimal from my experience in this line. As a line, light blue put on, including this intense version, isn't that great. So if you skip this line altogether, you wouldn't be missing much, especially if you don't like aquatics, just get away from this line. Um, not worth your time personally, at least for now. Um, I will be testing it. I think the next one is forever. So I'll be sniffing that one and seeing if it's worth it. I have Summer Vibes, which is the newest one um, in the Subscriber's Choice right now, seeing if people are gonna vote that one in for me to review. Um, so there is some coming through the trough uh, within my channel. And as always, uh, in, in regards to sampling samples, you never know if this bottle is gonna show up in my collection. Is it ever gonna get a review? You never know. But if I had to give a score currently, 
Um, I think it's fitting. Um, I think it's a okay aquatic. Like again, it's against the Versace Eau Fraiches, the Bulgari Aquas, the EDGs. Um, this guy goes against the original of the Toilet, even the Polo Blues. And I feel like it's in that genre right there. You know, don't pay full retail. Don't pay $100 for this intense version. Just pay as much as these guys are. And I think they're around the $50 mark. If I'm going to give this a score, I think it's just going to be an average score, an average fragrance that sells well, gets compliments, um, which is not a, it's like a no brainer. I'm going to wear this. I don't have to think about it. Um, signature scent kind of thing. Five out of 10. Average score for an average fragrance. Um, that's made for beginners or someone looking for something just okay as a signature scent. Um, maybe just stepping into the fragrance game. There's nothing wrong with having an average scent like this. Um, but at the end of the day, whew, yeah, not really that great. I was kind of, I was kind of rooting for this one. This one had lots of hype, lots of energy behind it. But at the end of the day, it's not, it didn't blow me away. Now that you heard my take, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. Good, bad, you disagree with me, um, you agree with me, um, you feel like certain notes are more pronounced than what I said. Um, I absolutely love those comments back and forth. Um, I'm sure I'm gonna get some of these comments that are gonna say this is the sexiest <laughs> compliment getter I have. How come you gave it a five out of 10? Don't trust this guy. Um, you always have at least three or four of those in the comments section. Um, can't wait for those. And as always, a great or poor fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your aquatic wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube. Have a good one.